Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. It's JJ once again and we're bringing you guys a performance oriented video this time around. So if you guys have checked out our brand new overview video on the GTX 770 and specifically the GTX 770 DirectCU2 OC graphics card, we've gone ahead and taken a couple of those cards, uh, in total actually three of them, thrown them together into this awesome system that we have here and we're going to be showing you guys some performance metrics. Now this isn't necessarily going to cover all aspects of performance in terms of singular GPU temperatures and and overclocking and things along those lines. If you guys are interested in that type of information, I'd love to hear about it here in terms of the comment section, and I'll work to see in terms of what we can get out to you if you guys are more interested in some of those aspects in terms of performance. Overall here, what we just want to give you is a little bit of a preview of how the actual platform scales in relation to taking advantage of SLI with our SLI-enabled motherboards. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into Metro Last Light, an awesome current uh, first-person shooter game that just has an outstanding engine, as well as we're going to go ahead and uh, tap Tomb Raider. So those two games are going to give us a little bit of a preview in terms of the performance capabilities of what the GTX 770 offers in SLI. So with that, let's first go ahead and take a look at the system that we're going to be utilizing and break down to you some of the componentry that we have within our testbed configuration before we jump to testing. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into our testbed and take a look at what we have installed. So uh, right off the bat, you can see that uh, the look is entirely different, right? And uh, that comes first and foremost from this awesome limited edition chassis that we're utilizing. It's actually kind of like a chassis test bed, um, but it's an outstanding build, has a great deal of flexibility and just looks awesome. Uh, this is actually Inwin's D-Frame, a limited edition chassis. It comes here in, of course, the red and black color theme, because of course that's corresponding to our ROG series motherboard that we're utilizing in here. But overall, you can see it's got a great amount of flexibility and room to be able to go ahead and install all the cooling that we need, as well as gives us flexibility in terms of how we're going to be mounting everything. As you can see here, we even have uh, top-mounted SSDs. Overall, a really outstanding chassis. Uh, great item to be able to work with here for our test build. Now, in terms of uh, the overall cooling, you can see here that we've gone ahead and uh, tapped Noctua in terms of their cooling solution. So we're using their high-performance NHU12S uh, tower CPU heatsink cooler. And then from there, we have four of the uh, their PWM series NFS 12A uh, series fans that are connected and so of course that's giving us a great amount of airflow to be able to cool our high performance configuration that we have which is not only overclocked on the GPUs but as well as on the CPU side as well so that gives us a great amount of airflow along with of course the open configuration. Now one thing to keep in mind though as far as this D-frame we're not using the tempered glass panel uh, which would normally be covering this so just to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, moving over in terms of the board of course, we're utilizing our ROG series, so this is the Rampage 4 Extreme. It's our high-performance, multi-GPU-enabled X79 series motherboard. We have a Extreme Edition i-series processor in there, overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. On the memory duties, of course, we have quad-channel enabled memory. So that's, as you can see here, four DIMMs of Kingston's HyperX Beast memory, 2133, running at that 2133 speed. And of course, in terms of storage, to be able to keep everything uh, fast, smooth, and giving us overall great response at how we're working with our operating system, we've got two SSDs, and that's going to be Kingston's HyperX uh, 3K series, 120 gigabytes in RAID 0. So that takes care of all our storage-based duties. Now, in terms of the GPUs, of course, uh, here we're running the GTX 770 DirectCU2 OC graphics cards. Uh, we have three of them here in SLI. And we'll actually be running these in a little bit of a special configuration. Uh, normally when people think about running an SLI, they don't necessarily dedicate one of the cards specifically for physics, uh, which the NVIDIA control panel does allow for. Um, but when we go ahead and run Metro Last Light, we've gone ahead and set up two of our GPUs to run in standard two-way SLI, and the third GPU will actually be dedicated towards physics-based processing. This allows us to go ahead and get the best performance uh, with the overall um, best latency and overall Im best improvement in terms of image quality because we're running the advanced uh, tessellation as well as the advanced uh, physics-based processing. And uh, that pretty much rounds out what we're utilizing here in terms of our testbed configuration. So from here, we're going to go ahead and actually jump back over to the desktop and get started in terms of evaluating what two-way and three-way uh, SLI looks like um, on this platform. Okay guys, so right before we actually jump into Metro Last Light, we're just going to take a look at how we have the system configured. So as I noted earlier, we have our Rampage 4 Extreme overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, and we're running 2133 quad-channel memory on those uh, Kingston HyperX Beast-enabled kits. And our GPUs, the, the GTX 7070 uh, DirectCU2 OC cards, we've actually gone ahead and overclocked further. So we have all three cards currently set to 1.25, 
uh, excuse me, 1.225, and then we also gone ahead and overclocked the memory to 7.5. So that's an overall nice uptick in terms of the uh, performance that we're going to be able to offer. Now in terms of the configuration, as you can see, we're running two-way SLI, but with our third card dedicated to physics-based processing. Uh, this is key because we want to be able to take advantage of the physics-based technology inside of Metro Last Light and be able to provide the best level of performance and gameplay experience. So you can see here we've pretty much maximized all settings that are offered within the game. Now normally I would usually recommend actually taking advantage of NVIDIA's GeForce Experience application and running their optimized profiles for the best compromise in terms of giving you outstanding image quality and great performance. For us we've gone ahead and just tweaked it a little bit specific to how we want to run our benchmark configuration. Um, but you could also go ahead and always easily, like I said, tap the GeForce Experience application and just click the optimize button and go from there. So let's go ahead and jump into Metro Last Light. All right, guys, so you can see here we've gone ahead and started off the benchmark. And uh, right off the bat for you guys that might not be familiar with this game engine or this game title, uh, it's utilizing a fully customized game engine that they've developed to really take advantage of the latest generation of DirectX 11 feature technologies as well as the latest generation of GPU-centric image technologies that are available to you. Now, uh, this has come something key because it's really kind of taking the best-in-class example of what you can achieve in a current high-performance AAA-based title uh, while also leveraging the latest generation of GPU technologies. And uh, NVIDIA, of course, has stepped up to the plate and worked extensively uh, with the game developers, such as the developers for Metro uh, 2033, to ensure that not only you're able to take advantage of a number of key features uh, within the image quality experience, like advanced tessellation, like physics, and uh, all kinds of other aspects that really just allow you to have a whole other level of immersion. As you guys are checking it out, hopefully, uh, you know, it comes through in terms of the level of detail that you have. Uh, the tessellation in itself is extremely impressive. Normally, most examples of tessellation are limited to just singular objects, but for this game, a huge amount of actually the on-screen characters, their clothing, and a lot of the things that you have around them are fully tessellated, and even the actual environment, such as uh, the concrete, certain uh, items that are actually on, on top of the, uh, the ground area, that is all tessellated. So when you keep in mind that essentially tessellation is fully having to create uh, a fully dimensional based polygon experience versus a flat, just let's say textured based experience, it allows for a whole level of immersion that's really impressive. So overall you can see that we've continued to offer a really smooth level of performance, uh, really great gameplay experience so far, uh, where not only do we have everything cranked up in terms of the resolution, all the key image quality settings, but we're even able to take advantage of the physics-based processing, which just adds a whole other dynamic of really giving you a more immersive environmental uh, gameplay experience. So we're getting ready to get towards here the end of the benchmark, but you can definitely see here that the performance is quite smooth and quite solid. And keep in mind that, of course, this title has in itself just launched, uh, so you're still going to, of course, see further optimization from the game developers in terms of improving performance, as well as NVIDIA is going to, of course, be working with them, you know, over uh, the next, uh, you know, couple of weeks and probably even the next couple of months to even continue to further push the performance. But keep in mind that even as an out-of-box experience, right off the bat, uh, the default driver stack, even in multi-GPU configurations, which was really a test of allowing you to see how solid things are, are working smoothly and effectively to be able to give you an outstanding gaming experience. So that pretty much takes us uh, to uh, wrapping up the benchmark. So it's going to go ahead and quit out, auto open up a browser for us and give us a little bit of perspective in terms of the performance. So it's gone ahead and opened it up here and we can see that uh, we have a, a great frame rate. Overall, an average frame rate of about 60 frames a second uh, with a maximum frame rate of about 172 frames. Uh, and of course, with um, you know, the dynamic gameplay and the, and the different variables that you have at play, you of course have uh, a reduced minimum frame rate perspective. But overall, in real world gameplay, when you're actually in game, we found it to be a very smooth level of experience. In addition to that, the frame latency performance that you have uh, with the dedicated hardware technology and the driver optimization uh, that are on these GPUs, along with the performance that we're able to offer through our cooling, is really giving you an outstanding level of gameplay performance. So with next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Tomb Raider.
Okay guys, so now that we've wrapped up Metro, we're going to go ahead and jump into Tomb Raider, another awesome title. And we've pretty much gone ahead and maxed out all the image quality settings once again, just like we did for Metro. Uh, same thing like always, of course if you wanted to have an optimized experience, you could go ahead and use the GeForce Experience options. Uh, we've gone ahead and just actually extended them to a little bit higher level than what they're recommending for us. But overall we want to give you guys uh, pretty much kind of the, the most strenuous level of testing that we can provide to give you a really great example. We're also going to make another adjustment though before we jump into the game, which is we're going to change from being two-way SLI enabled to actually doing a three-way uh, full uh, three-way SLI configuration. The main reason being is that with this game engine, uh, it doesn't necessarily have a full dedicated physics-based engine, although there is some really specialized uh, physics-based technology as in general uh, for things like uh, the character's hair, uh, which is coined for this, Tress FX. Um, but we're going to go ahead and reset this to a three-way enabled configuration, and then from there we'll go ahead and jump into benchmarking. Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and start the integrated game benchmark. In the past, we've actually shown you guys full real-time uh, gameplay, and actually us running through the entire first level, which is just an outstanding uh, gaming experience. Uh, and we've shown that to you actually on the GTX Titan. Uh, but here we've just decided to go ahead and run the integrated benchmark just because of a short amount of time that we have available to you. But it's still a great representation of the really dynamic and uh, in impressive uh, graphics engine that we have at play. Same thing uh, like Metro is that we have a huge amount of specialized APIs put in place, whether it's things like tessellation, advanced lighting technologies, uh, displacement, uh, high resolution textures, pretty much everything you want to be able to see in a modern triple A PC gaming title and really allows us to take advantage of the high performance capability of what we have here within our three-way enabled configuration where you can see that we're uh, near, nearly approaching almost a hundred frames a second in terms of the overall gameplay performance. Overall really allows you to just have an outstanding gaming experience that's fast, responsive, fluid, um, and really is, is consistent, which is another key item. Normally, of course, in multi-GPU configurations, uh, it takes a great amount of, of time to be able to ensure that. So here you can see that we have an overall maximum frame rate of about 100 frames, our average of about 78, and our minimum frame rate actually even being almost the uh, same as 56. You can keep in mind that if we probably would have utilized the overall optimized GeForce Experience settings, we could have probably even maintained vertical sync, and with the adaptive V-Sync technology that NVIDIA has that can dyna dynamically unload it, we would have had a really great uh, image quality experience in terms of helping to minimize on-screen tearing. So with that, we're going to go ahead and drop back out and uh, head back over to our desktop. Okay guys, so that wraps up our performance preview of the GTX 770 in two-way with dedicated physics-based processing as well as in three-way SLI. So overall, that's hopefully giving you a little bit of an outlier in terms of what you can come to expect from the latest generation of ASUS and NVIDIA-enabled graphics cards. We think performance has been pretty impressive, and even here in my testing, uh, and even as little as one uh, card configurations, I've been really impressed by this card in terms of its overall performance, uh, the consistency of the gaming experience, the image quality enhancement that it brings to the table, and how cool and quiet it runs at. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, we'd love to see them here on the page. Feel free to drop them into the comment section or you can make sure to hit me up and uh, I'll do my best in terms of getting back to you in terms of a YouTube inbox. Uh, in addition to that, if you guys want to go ahead and hit us up through other social media channels, you can head over to our ASUS North American Facebook page or our North American Twitter page and drop us some friendly commentary there as well. As always, if you guys liked the video, please make sure and uh, like it, a thumbs up, and please make sure and subscribe. So thank you.